Hi, Dr. Scott Beyer here. I'm one of the founders and clinicians at Integrative Brain and Body. And today I wanna to talk to you guys at like the leaky gut 101. So what is leaky gut at the basic level and hopefully in a way that you can understand and then maybe in future videos we can really get into like the nitty gritty. Um, but leaky gut, um, a lot more people are hearing more and more about it. It is like on the forefront of a lot of different research and leaky gut has been linked to so many different types of chronic related disease. And the reason for that being is the biggest thing that leaky gut can contribute to is, is inflammation, okay? Now, inflammation is like the, the common denominator amongst like thousands of different types of chronic illness. And uh, usually if, if inflammation doesn't cause the, the chronic illness directly, it, it tends to kind of magnify some of the symptoms, okay? Now, what the heck is leaky gut? Well, um, our, our gut is basically uh, a one of the most fragile barriers in our body. So our body has... Uh, many different types of barriers to keep stuff from the outside world out and prevent it from getting into our bloodstream. Now the most obvious barrier that we have is like our skin, but we've got um, you know things like in our lung mucosa, um, but one of the most fragile barriers by far is our gut barrier, okay? And it constantly kind of needs to be tended to. Um, to give you guys an idea of how thin our gut barrier is, well our skin in certain areas can be 15 to 30 cells thick, Okay, and all it takes is a little bit of dry skin or a paper cut. Now you've exposed the outside world to your inside world, um, and that will elicit you know inflammation or immune system activity locally. Okay, our gut, so our skin in certain areas is 15 to 30 cell layers thick. Our gut is only one cell layer thick. Okay, so what what separates the contents from the inside of your intestine to your bloodstream is just one cell layer thin. Okay, now. When it comes to our uh, digestive system, our digestive system's job and responsibility is basically if, if we eat a big chunk of food, this is a big chunk of food right here, we should be able to break down that food into small enough particles so that our gut has the, the, um, the ability to be able to pick and choose what it pulls into our bloodstream. It's what they call like uh, semi-permeable. Okay, um, our, our gut barrier is, is almost like a, a screen door. So if you can imagine like a nice summer day or like a cool fall day or something where um, it's nice enough to have the windows open in the house and um, in your front foyer, you've got the front door open but the screen door closed, okay? Um, chances are is that like if a couple dust particles come into your foyer like stuff that you can't even see chances are is you as an individual probably won't even see that you won't freak out okay well let's say that you've got gashes in the screen door and now all these little things like little squirrels or wasps or dragonflies are starting to get into your foyer you'll probably freak out a little bit okay it's the same way in regards to our gut barrier and our immune system so if our gut barrier becomes more fragile and there's bigger gashes in it that's going to increase the absorption of just things into our bloodstream okay so like i said we need to be able to break down food into small enough particles so that our gut has the ability to be able to pick and choose what it pulls inside of it. But there are certain things that will wear and tear at that gut barrier, okay? So like if this is a gut cell and this is another gut cell, these guys should be tightly bound together by a piece of adhesive called a tight junction. Well, there's certain things like stress or certain types of inflammatory foods or certain things like taking um, antibiotics for prolonged period of time or taking things like NSAIDs like Tylenol, Aleve, Advil, you know, for years and years and years, those tend to weigh, wear away at the, that piece of adhesive and then we get a, a cellular separation. That's what we call intestinal permeability or leaky gut. So one of the things that, that can, those things can contribute to is the decreased integrity of our gut barrier. Okay, now what that means is now our body loses the ability to be able to pick and choose of what, what it pulls into the bloodstream. And now things just start pouring into our bloodstream unannounced. And if something gets into our bloodstream where our body doesn't give it the green light to do so, there's one system's job and responsibility to be able to patrol the area and make sure if that is a like a benign uh, particle or if it's like a foreign invader, and that's our immune system. So our immune system, what will happen is it will arrive to the scene of the crime, 
okay, uh, as evidenced by Pac-Man here, and it sits there and it kind of patrols the area back and forth, and what it will do is it'll arrive to the scene of the crime and create a little microscopic pocket of swelling, um, and, and that microscopic pocket of swelling is also known as inflammation. So inflammation in immune system function, you cannot have one without the other. It's, it's, the reason for that being is inflammation is a weapon that our immune system uses, okay? And like I said, it, it uses it to prevent that particle, whether that be, uh, you know, a type of virus or bacteria, whether it be, you know, like an undigested food particle, a dead tissue cell, if it gets into our body that it doesn't belong there, our immune system has to clean it up. Okay, so it uses this weapon called inflammation to prevent that from getting deeper and deeper into the system. Okay, so all of this is happening around the gut. And the, the, the weird thing is, is those with leaky gut, only about a third of individuals with leaky gut actually have gut related symptoms. The other two thirds, um, it, it affects things system wide. Okay, and the reason for that being is when, when your immune system is active, like if things are just pouring in and your immune system's active, these guys, what they'll do is they'll release these little warning flags. And these warning flags are not just local to the gut. These guys get released systemically. And what they do is they alert immune systems in different areas of your body saying, hey, you know, our friends are doing battle somewhere. It's kind of like the example I always give is like if, if either you at your house or if you know a friend who has like an alarm system at their house and then every time like you open the front door, even crack the front door a little bit, you'll hear beep, beep, beep. Okay, well let's say like one night you, you came home from grocery shopping and you, you closed the door but you didn't close it all the way and you go to bed and then all of a sudden at like 2.30 in the morning like a gust of wind kind of cracks the door open a little bit and you hear this beep 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 the little warning flag, you'll probably be way more sensitive at like the drop of a dime than at 2.30 in the morning after you've heard that beep or that little warning or a little alarm system than if you're to just get up on your own. The immune system's the same way as these cytokines, what they'll do is they'll activate immune systems elsewhere like in your thyroid, in your brain, in your lungs, in your sinuses, in your joints, and it makes them more prone or, or more, they're, they're ready, okay? Now if they're ready, they're more prone to use this thing like inflammation, and if they use it elsewhere, if they use it like in your joints, inflammation tends to sensitize all of our pain fibers in our body. So some of the biggest symptoms that we see, the one commonality, or the common symptoms that we see with leaky gut, are first and foremost things like brain fog and fatigue. The other thing that we can see is, is um, mood related issues like depression, anxiety, or ADD, okay? The other thing that we'll see is like chronic pain, like pain that's not like just in one joint, it's in multiple joints in your body. So we'll see a lot of that. We'll see a lot of gut issues and believe it or not, skin issues. So leaky gut, like I said, is, is kind of the cornerstone of a lot of different research right now and they're tying it, uh, they're linking it to a lot of different chronic diseases because the one thing that it contributes to is, is low grade chronic inflammation, okay? So um, if you guys like this video, please comment on it. We can get a little bit more, more nitty gritty as to certain things that you need to avoid to prevent leaky gut or certain things that happen, you know, in regards to thyroid health or brain health or joint health. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know and I'll, I'll be more than happy to make more. I'm Dr. Scott Beyer. I hope you guys found this informative. You guys have a wonderful day. <music>